Hello, in this programming video, I am going to cover exceptions or just a simple example. And over the next few tutorials, we'll go more in depth into exceptions. You may know it as the Troy catch block as well. That's usually what I refer to it as. And that's because there is, you know, try and catch as part of it. Okay, so the format is like this input try, you put curly braces, you put catch open close bracket and put the name of the exception which we'll, we'll add one in a second and then the curly braces like so and the whole point is something that might you know cause an error during the running of the application and actually make the application crash you can use a try catch and if you you know handle or you know try and catch for that exception that error if it occurs you'll get into here you can handle it, but you will not actually crash the application. So if, for example, maybe you're loading a file. We're not going to use that example. We're going to use something a little simpler. But actually go back to the file I.O. part of this series and enclose what we did in there in the try catch block, the way we will cover you know, momentarily in this video. So if we try and load a file, that file doesn't exist and it, you know, let's say crashes the application. Maybe we have a file that loads in settings for a game. And if that file doesn't exist, the code has default settings. So the try catch block could be used for that. So what I'm going to do is create a simple example. So I'm going to create an array, poorly array. And I'm going to do a new in. So it's going to be of the size 10. And in here, what I'm going to do is do a system dot out dot println and I'm gonna print out the array at index 10 remember it's always n minus 1 so it starts from 0 to n minus 1 so it's 0 so the indexes are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 for this case so this is you know out of bounds and the exception that we need to use for this example is called array index out of bound exception and i'm going to call it error i will provide a link with this video so you can have a look at all the different exceptions and i'll actually show you in a second an easy way of trying to figure out which exception you need while developing so we're going to system dot out dot print ln and i'm just going to print out the error so if we run this notice it hasn't crashed but it has given us, you know, it's saying that the problem is it's caught this exception and it's because we're trying to access the index at number 10. To prove it hasn't crash, if I do system dot ln and I just say end, as you can see, it still hits it. So let me show you what happens if, let's say I'll do 20. Same problem, it just says the problem is at 20. But if I say nine, for example, which is the last index, it's fine, it prints as zero, because that's what, you know, automatically assigned. They don't have to do be to do with integer, that's fine. Doesn't really matter what data type it is. Let me show you how you can sort of identify the exception that you might need and what it looks like if you don't actually handle this. So if I literally get rid of this code here. So all I'm gonna do is go straight to the printing out. As you can see, fine. If we go on to 10, for example. Not only was this last line not printed out because it actually crashed here, it printed out the error. This, you know, actually crashes and sends an error. So it's actually said exception in thread main and it's provided the exception right there. So while you're developing the application, if you can think of how to, you know, replicate the error, replicate it and it'll tell you in the console what the exception is. So you can just use that exception right here. But with this, what happens is it goes to this catch block 
and you can handle it accordingly. So if you're loading a file, maybe you have some default values. If you're trying to access an array, maybe you have asked the user for some information, you can, you know, ask them again, for example, but it doesn't crash the application because that's not what you, you know, want in a end application. That's not a very good user experience. So that's it for exceptions. We'll cover more in-depth examples of the next few videos. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome Java video.